Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. And our guest today is going to help you with all of that. Our guest today is Sean Channel. Sean uh, spent many years failing in sales. As you well know, as entrepreneurs and small business owners, sales is all, it's what it's all about. And as much as uh, he tried to learn sales skills, it's very difficult. So he changed from a traditional sales program to something else that will make you a better seller of your product. And it's a difficult thing, but Sean has made it easy. So welcome to the show, Sean Channel. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. I'm grateful that you're here because your topic, as you well know, you know, pressed a button in me. Um, and you're here specifically because it pressed that button when I read information about you on Podmatch that people don't know how to sell because they're selling themselves and not a car. Well, I think most of us just, you know, we're to the point about selling ourselves, most of us are taught to not talk about ourselves. And so it is very challenging for a lot of people to make that switch, uh, especially as an adult. And I think, um, you know, I think even if you're selling a car, there's a, a strategy that you need to have that, you know, a lot of places just don't teach. Uh, we're not taught how to be successful salespeople. And I think everything is about selling, no matter what you're doing. I mean, even if you have a job, a, a salaried position, you're selling your phone, phone voice, the posture in your chair, what you're communicating about, and how you care about what you're presenting to the prospective buyer. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that you know the core fundamental piece of sales is communication, and if you can become really good at communicating, it trickles over into every aspect of your life. Uh, in fact, the sales methodology that I train is called strategic communication, and it's about learning how to be a better communicator so that you can sh- you know, help people understand your ideas so you can become better at understanding what their needs and their goals and their challenges and their wants are, and then connecting the dots. If they need this and you can help them get there, then be able to communicate how you can help them do that. And that trickles over from business to personal as well. Yeah, people, I think many people who are stuck in having a difficult time selling don't realize that they're buying from you a human, you're not a robot. So you have to talk about, not have to, but your own experiences are part of your conversation with a prospect. You may not have share every experience, but you understand and empathize with what the buyer is experiencing themselves. Does that make any sense or am I just all over the place? No. Um, you know, one of the things I've told countless clients and entrepreneurs, business owners, and salespeople is, you know, if marketing was enough to make people buy from you, you wouldn't necessarily need to have salespeople. And there has to be that human connection. You have to be able to understand and dive deeper and relate with them on a different level and help them you know, understand the value that you're bringing. And you can't do that in a, a, an email, uh, you know, a website. All those things are important. But at the end of the day, we have to make that connection with people. Yes. Um, I had, I'm used to the phone. So I like the telephone. Um, I think that, you know, that's been going on for a long time. And I know Zoom has replaced Zoom video or Zoom live or whatever has replaced most anything today about selling. But I like the phone. I think there's a personal, uh, people are used to it. They're comfortable with it. And I think that, you know, I can walk around when I'm on the phone. Mm. 
and release whatever energy might be there, there or get excited about what I'm talking about and in, and include the prospect. And for those who are listening, I say prospects are not buyers, I mean, are not clients. They're not a client until they pay you. <laughs> until then, they're a prospect. That's yes. my, yeah, that's, that's another distinction. And there are several of them. But for me, the phone works really, really well. I find a restriction even with a headphone or a microphone. It's just not the same to me. So do you teach, how do you teach people to sell? What mo mentality, modality do you recommend that they use? Well, I think it depends on the business. Um, and I think there's important aspects in all of those. Um, you know, there's certainly clients out there that want to have that face to face. They want to have the handshake. They want to have the lunch. Uh, and I think depending on what, you know, if you're doing large, size, you know, a lot of money, long sales cycle, Mm -hmm. having that personal face-to-face interaction is important. Um, Personally, I found, started finding my success in sales over the phone. And it is something that I still use today. And, you know, if you get online and you'll see a lot of people talking about cold calling is dead. And I just don't believe that's true. I I agree. The best way, the fastest way to increase your customer base is to pick up the phone and start reaching out to potential clients. Um, That is it's it's it will be there until the phone no longer exists and the fact that we're all inundated with so much email that you know there is this zoom fatigue uh you know people reach out and try and sell you over text message and dms the phone is almost becoming unique in that aspect so it's no longer as much noise as it was maybe 10 15 years ago now our phones rarely ring it's all the other things that we're inundated with. So you actually have an opportunity to stand out just by picking up the phone. So now that you've said that, the people who have dropped their phone <laughs> and fallen on their butts are going, what? What is this man speaking about? But he's right. Because right now, the phone is unique and special and old and boring. But it's not. You hear a real voice, not a recorded voice. And you have the opportunity to create a relationship easier on the phone. Yeah. We've all read a text message and misinterpreted that. We've all read an email and gone, you know, this word or this sentence, you know, I don't really know that that's the right person or the right fit for me. You know, there's so much risk that we take when we're not able to directly interact with somebody. And, you know, Zoom is great for that face to face, in person is amazing. But from a pure scalability perspective, you have really email or phone calls. And emails are should, the only purpose that you should be using for your emails is to generate enough curiosity so they'll pick up the phone and have a conversation with you. And I like to use emails as a follow up to a phone call. Absolutely. Confirm- it documents what you talked about. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you and I are on the same page on that, yes, because you know you've got the phone, you've got email, and you've got whatever else you might want to plug in there. But I think that the f- email works great in documenting the conversation, you know, con- confirming what was discussed. Yeah, it shows that you were listening. Uh, it's incredible if there's action items for either party to say, here's the action items, here's when we'll have those accomplished, here's our next steps. It sets you up for that next conversation in a perfect way. So can you give me an example of someone that you have uh, trained, taught how to uh, sell? Because you've been coaching and training salespeople for a long time, you know, 16 years plus or minus. And you help these companies maximize their sales efforts. Do you have a... You don't have to give away any tricks that people should pay for, uh, but do you have some steps that you can give our audience that they can use right now and then they can call you later for more? Uh, just to uh, give them some insight, well, you know, we've discussed the phone. We've discussed the power of the phone because you can pick up and talk to somebody you haven't spoken to in a very long time and nine out of ten times they will be totally receptive because like you're a human being on the phone. 
You're not a human being on Instagram or texts because it's very easy, as you say, to make a mistake or not be interpreted correctly. So can you give our listening audience some insights as to what they can do like right now before they call you to hire you? Yeah, I I just sat in front of um, about 75 business owners here about three weeks ago, and we talked about elevator pitches. And there's, you know, if you start looking into sales strategy and sales methodology, there's various forms of the elevator pitch. And one of the things that I train and, and teach and talk a lot about is most people do the elevator pitch with the wrong intent and the wrong purpose and, and really hurt their chances of landing their clients. And if you think about the traditional elevator pitch, it's really focused on me, my product, my service. And whether it's a, you know, the magic 30 second elevator pitch or it's two or three minutes long, you are going out there and you're just immediately talking about you. Most people don't really care about you, especially if they don't know you. So you are immediately putting yourself in a disadvantage because you're focused on your wants, your needs, your service, your products, your business, you know, whatever your pitch entails. When at the end of the day, the person you're talking to, what they care about is their challenges, their problems, their stress, their, you know, boss yelling at them, the meeting the, the deadlines with the bank, you know, getting the, the sales uh, for the quarter, you know, getting inventory to clients. They don't care about you. So if you go out there and you start pitching people, you are immediately going to put yourself at a disadvantage. Now, can it work? Absolutely. Uh, I spent you know two and a half years knocking on doors, and I had a 45-second elevator pitch. But I had to talk to 100 people a day to close 10. And for most of us, in especially in B2B sales, we don't have 100 potential clients to go call or knock on or email every single day. And so we have to be better at engaging the client around what they care about, not what we care about. Well, I hope people who are listening are taking notes. And I always recommend that after you've listened to any of my podcasts with the stunning guests I am blessed with, that you listen to it again with a notepad. And I don't mean a Word document. I mean a pad with a pen or a pencil. Or a quill. I don't really care. (laughs) It's just something that you can get. People don't understand that once you start writing, it goes into your body. So you absorb it no matter what. But you're always going to miss something. You're always going to miss something. So it's not about you. It's about them. That's We know that. I mean, we are taught that in the early stages of any business career. And yet we ignore it when we're creating this quote-unquote elevator pitch. Why is that? Well, part of it is what we know. We know our product. We know our service. We know our business. We know our company. We know ourselves. So it's what we're comfortable with because of what we know. We don't necessarily know their business. We don't necessarily know their challenges. We don't know what their goals are. And so most people, if they're going into a situation and there's a you know level of discomfort, they stick with what they know. Additionally, a lot of people aren't trained on how to uncover a client's goals. They aren't trained on how to uncover a client's needs or challenges. And, you know, I, one of the first questions I was taught in sales was, what are your pain points? Ask them what their pain point is. What keeps you up at night? And if I walk up to a potential client, I'm like, <laughs> hey, Joanne, you know, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Sean. I, you know, work in sales consulting. Tell me, what are your pain points when it comes to training people? They're going to be like, who are you? What do you do? Why why would I tell you my pain point? What? I know. And so, you know, these attempts that we've been taught traditionally aren't very effective. Now, can that question happen at some point in the conversation? Absolutely. But we got to get them there before we focus on that. Well, it's important to establish common ground, uh, rapport, whatever you want to call it. 
and I don't think that I have people, uh, you know, going after me on Facebook, for example. You know, it's like, hi, my name is Joe. Do you want to buy my product? Or something similar to that in 5,000 words. And it's like, it ticks me off. It, you know, I have to handle that because that's just a pattern where my reaction is, you know, strongly negative when people do that. But it's like, I don't know you and you don't know me. And then a lot of people who want to become my quote unquote friend, and I have parameters about that. I don't make friends with everybody who wants to make friends with me. And they'll, you know, send me a messenger uh uh, query and they'll say tell me about yourself and I send them my website address <laughs> I'm not going to get into a conversation with people who want to be in my life you know uh, in the middle of my life or on the around my life who don't take the time to research I mean if you want to know what I do or who I am at the very least look at the de- definition of what I am on Facebook where you found me. I mean, this is what we need to do. I would imagine that you do something similar to that before you're speaking to a prospect or a potential client. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, you know, I think you have to balance the research that you do. I, one of the challenges I had as a young salesperson was spending, you know, hours researching somebody before I picked up the phone and called them or sent them an email. And, you know, chances are they're not going to pick up the phone or respond to your email. So really I was hurting myself because I was investing too much time in research. Mm -hmm. But then I've seen people who do no research. And you're right. uh, Social media has made it really easy to reach out to people. And I mean, I'd say probably 95% of the messages I get are, um, you know, just not good. So (laughs) You, you have to take some time to understand who they are, what they do, and do that research that you're talking about. Yeah, it's really important that you have some idea. I mean, even when people con- you know, contact me, oh, I have some questions or let's set up an appointment. It's like, who are you? And they don't give me anything beyond their name. Uh, and, and, you know, there are a lot of, I don't know how many Sean channels there are. I know there are quite a few Joanne Victorias. So, I mean, how can they find me or how can I find someone when they don't give me a sufficient information to move forward with? I don't understand. It, there's a thickness around people's brains right now, and I can I guess we can blame it on COVID. I don't know. Well, I would say that we certainly have lost some of our ability to interact socially over the last, uh, you know, two years. Yes, yes. Some people have. I have unfortunately be- become more determined and um, more direct. Because I'm kind of tired of the excuse of people being tired or not willing to move forward. And then there are others who have just given up a quarter of their brain to the excuse of COVID. So who knows? I'm sure some people are legitimately affected by it, but it has certainly put a mark in the road. So what would you... Okay, so right now you've advise people to pick up the phone because I just think that's, you know, the only way to start. And then um, what if there are certain types of individuals they want to speak to? How do they find them? Well, there's a, I mean, LinkedIn's a great tool from a, just a purely looking for business contacts um, as a platform. And I do a lot of um, navigation through LinkedIn and looking at companies to find individuals within the corporation that I want to reach out to. Uh, there's plenty of different paid um, programs out there. You know, you can buy lead lists, etc. And one of the things that I don't do, I have some partners that I can help companies with uh, or direct them to is, you know, you do have to have a funnel. You have to have some kind of uh, lead source, whether that be driving people to your website so they can download a, you know, white paper or a, you know, free PDF. Uh, But you have to have, you know, you should have created your own funnel so you start to build your own 
list of qualified prospects. Correct. Yeah, you have you, it's it's unfortunate that you can't sit back and just wait for people to show up. It's it does work in some instances, like the way you and I became engaged today with using a source that is established so that we could connect on a specific path, i.e. podmatch.com, which provides guests slash hosts to each other for pod- podcast recordings. And until they have established that a similar system for all of the various industries out there, you have to have something. I mean, your website is your business card, more or less. And as as Sean says, give give something away so people can show you how they operate, how they talk. Because if the, if it's a written, you know, white paper or book or PDF, whatever, you can get an idea of the thinking process of the prospect. So give me something else for the audience, Sean. We're making well, phone. Th- we're Go making ahead. phone calls. We're on LinkedIn. We're creating our website, and I see you have a YouTube channel. What do you do on your YouTube channel? Uh, the YouTube channel has been really uh, part inspiration and part you know sales strategy. Uh, personally, I think they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you know, after working with salespeople for 15 plus years, I know that if they're not uh, motivated, if they're not inspired on a regular basis, then odds are they're going to struggle to to take that first step, which is, you know, whether it's knock on a door or, you know, step into that meeting or make a phone call or an email, uh, they got to be, you know, fired up to to do that. And so it's, again, part inspiration, part uh, sales strategy. So the listeners, you have an opportunity to read about Sean Channel on LinkedIn. You can see him, hear him on YouTube and various other places, Instagram, Twitter, etc. So I think it's really important that you do what Sean has done. Copy him. You know, if you need to be connected, more connected on LinkedIn, more visual on YouTube, there's several uh, ways that social media can help you. But I think picking up the phone really works well. So how can people find you, Sean? Uh, they can certainly check out our, our website, uh, with just uh, hyphen launch.com. Uh, they can certainly connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, we also have uh, Just Launch on Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. So we're all over social media. Um, you know, they can reach out and we can start a conversation around you know, what it looks like to improve your communication skills so that you find more clients. Okay. Well, I hope everybody appreciates the information that Sean Channel has shared with us today because he's had the experience himself and these are the types of people I want to be on the show to share their experiences with you so that you know that you're not alone out there in your struggles, in your successes, that other people have had similar paths and became successful. So I want to thank Sean Channel for being here today. And till next time, everybody. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts, check out Joanne's coaching programs, and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care, and thanks for being here.